This video shows how to connect to Yaskawa's DriveWorks EZ10 demo using the Splashtop software. We will have an overview of what Splashtop is, how to receive your invitation and install Splashtop, logging into the demo, using the virtual I.O., and finally which monitoring methods can be used. First off, to gain access to and get connected to the demo unit, you must email us at training at once we receive your request, you will be sent a Splashtop invitation. This invitation will look like this. Once you have the email, you simply follow the steps listed by clicking on the Accept Invitation link. You will then need to create a Splashtop account. Choose your password and enter the CAPTCHA code or click the box. Click Create. After you create your account, you will see a DriveWorks EZ Pro PC listed. This is the PC that has been allocated for you to use. Now before you click Connect to connect to the computer, you actually must install the business application software. So return to the email that you were sent and click on the link on Step 2. You will download the standard desktop app for your version of Windows. Open the EXE and let it run through the installation process. So now that we installed the Splashtop software, you could click Connect on your login page to start the application or you could open up your Splashtop business app. Type in your login and password. Make sure that Stay Logged In is selected and click Login. Now you're only going to see the computer that was assigned and allocated to you. The security code or password is going to be listed in the email that was sent from your instructor. We can see that the invitation does indeed include a password. Now we are connected to the remote PC. So if, for whatever reason, you cannot connect to the remote PC, please contact your instructor for assistance. We have full access to the remote PC with DriveWorks EZ Pro software already installed. Find the DriveWorks EZ10 icon on the desktop and double-click it to start the software. This is the Pro level of DriveWorks EZ, and you should notice that the software looks pretty much identical to the DriveWorks EZ standard software that we've been using up to this point. We can click on the gear icon to confirm that we are working with the Pro version. Since we are using this remote PC now, there are a few things we need to be aware of. This remote PC is locally connected via a USB connection to a GA500 drive. So when you are using DriveWorks EZ Pro through the Splashtop software, make sure that you select a USB connection, and when you start a DriveWorks EZ10 project, make sure you select a GA500 drive. Another application that we already have pre-installed on this PC is Virtual I.O. There is a shortcut on the desktop, so if I minimize my DriveWorks EZ, I have a Virtual I.O. application right here. Double-click that, and the program is going to look like this. This program is used to force the digital inputs on and off, and it is also able to send a variable voltage signal to the A1 and A2 inputs. So I could toggle S1 on, S2 on, and I could change my analog input levels. These analog input levels are in percentage, so right now it is at 5%. I can click it to change it to 6%, and now I have 6% of the signal on the terminal A1. I also have digital outputs that could be read from the drive. So this is already physically wired up to the drive. This software is just a way to force these signals on and off and change the value for the analog input levels. Another software tool that's installed on this computer is DriveWizard Industrial. DriveWizard Industrial is a free software tool that you can download right off yaskawa.com. This is already installed on this computer and we can use it as a monitoring tool. And I have DriveWizard Industrial right here. So once you get to this opening screen, first thing you'll probably want to do is connect to the drive. So you click Drive Selection and Communication and then select the correct connection method. For DriveWorks EZ, we're connecting over USB, so we're going to do the same thing for DriveWizard Industrial. Make sure it's selected, USB Direct to Drive. You can always test the connection, and as long as everything is good there, you could connect to the drive and go online. Now, it's also important to note that you cannot have simultaneous USB connections by DriveWorks EZ and DriveWizard Industrial. You'll have to disconnect from one program to connect the other. Right now it's going to read all of the parameters and initialize the program to line up with the parameters for the size drive it is connected to. And you get this little shortcut screen here. I'm just going to view the parameters so I can see that the DriveWorks EZ function selection, parameter A107, is enabled. 
so DriverXEZ is already enabled on this drive. Anything in red is a modified parameter, so we can just click on the left, Modified Parameters, and you can see all the parameters that have been changed. So it looks like there's some DriverXEZ programming set up already in this drive. You can see that the digital inputs and digital output and analog input are allocated for these DriverXEZ functions. So if we'd like to restore the drive back to default, what we can do is we can go up to the Edit tab, and you can initialize the drive by clicking the Initialize Drive icon. A 2220 or a two-wire initialization is a standard factory default, so I'm going to click that and set. There's a handful of parameters that do not get reset to factory default upon an initialization, and A107 is one of them, and that's actually a good thing. Now as far as monitoring what the drive is actually doing, I'd recommend using the Startup and Diagnostics tab in Drive Wizard Industrial. There's a tool under there called Status and Fault History. So if we click the play arrow, then the online monitoring will become active. Now we can see if the digital I.O. is on or off. The software will tell us that there is a fault state when the little LED icon turns red. We can also select up to eight different monitors to see what's going on with the drive. For example, frequency reference, output frequency, and since the virtual I.O. panel can control A1 and A2, I'm going to set this to Analog Input A1. So when you hit the Start, it's going to start viewing what the monitors are in this and what the statuses are of the I.O. in real time. So here's my virtual I.O. I can close S1, and S1 is closed in the panel. Close S2, S2 is now closed in the panel. And I can see what my analog input is by changing this 6% to say 33%. And now I can see 33% in my status panel. Another nice thing you can do is you can view the full fault history. This will display the 10 most recent faults in the drive. If you hit the update to make sure everything is up to date in here, you can look and see what the current fault is. So that if the GA500 faults for whatever reason, this will display what the fault code is. This will be helpful since you guys can't see the keypad when you're operating this drive remotely. Also, we have the fault trace, which will tell you what happened when the drive tripped out on that most recent fault. Now we do have a Drive Wizard Industrial Tips and Tricks e-learning module series. I'd recommend watching that if you would like to know more information about Drive Wizard Industrial. So if you have any questions or issues with Splashtop or connecting to the drive remotely, please let us know at training at .com. In the next video, we'll finally get around to that new application story I promised you. So please continue on to the next video, Chapter 5.